there's so much for you to, to, to know and to be excited about than just getting born again and getting baptized with water. And I, I exalt those things. Those are amazing. But to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And for me, it was like, I can't see him. I can't do any of that. How do I know he's real? But I was convinced it's in the word. So it's in the word. I believe it. That settles it. And so that's what happened. I believed it, got in the word, started praying in my prayer language. Stuff happened. Life changed because I, I got the empowerment of the Holy Spirit since I believed. And I think that's what's missing in a lot of Christians' life. They don't have no power. They have a status. But when it comes to operating in your authority, I don't know if you, you have, I don't know if you're fully dressed or clothed. And so I thought, man, I need to start preaching more on the baptism of the Holy Spirit because of how it changed our lives. It changed my family's life. Uh, of course, here, I, th I think we still do it. We always invite people, you want to get saved. Now, there's something called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Would you like to experience that? And we don't force it on people, but I think it's time to produce some teaching out here so you can really, really study and get a hold of it. There, I know people who start studying this and just looking at the scriptures and got filled with the Holy Ghost, start talking in tongues while they were, while they were just studying it. And um, it's just a lot of awesome things that happen. And you'll know it. Somebody asked me one time, well, what if you start speaking something in tongues and it turned out you're speaking something bad? You, the, you, because the Holy Ghost got your back. He says you won't speak anything a curse. He won't let you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Now, uh, verse uh, 7. And all the men were about 12. Verse 8. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months. Now, this is amazing how the Apostle Paul stayed there and continued to teach him. And that's so important. A lot of times we hear things, but we're not settling down to get an understanding and get, a, get clarity and get teaching on the thing. And he went into the synagogue, spake boldly for a space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. I know what Paul preached. Paul preached grace. He made that clear in the book of Galatians. Verse 9. But when the uh, divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitudes, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of the one Tyrannus. And in verse 10. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard, watch this, the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the word of the Lord Jesus Christ is the word of grace. It's the gospel of grace. They, they continue to hear for two years. Both Jews and Greeks continue to hear that for two years. And that's where the powerful move of God came from. Just preaching that right gospel. Now. So Paul found some who were already disciples, but were not yet filled with the Holy Spirit. So now let's deal with the speaking in tongues part just for a moment here. Speaking in tongues is a valid gift today. It is a gift. Um, I want to change that a little bit because there was some confusion in times past. What people would say was, well, speaking in tongues is a gift like all of the other gifts. And, you know, not everybody has all the other gifts. This is a little bit more of a gift that's presented to everybody who wants it versus the gift of speaking in tongues that's listed in Corinthians. The gift of speaking in tongues is the ability to speak in tongues and then follow through with an interpretation of what you said. That's a gift. So if I spoke in tongues, I follow up and said, thus saith the Lord, you should know by five o'clock, da, 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 you understand it. But then there's the prayer language of, of praying in tongues. It's a fellowship language. It's, 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 it's a result of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is, an, it is the overflow of the Holy Spirit that gets on your tongue and you can pray this way. I remember we used to be having our corporate prayer on Saturdays and we would every now and then Get some deep people that will walk in and say, y'all all out of order. Because, you know, the Bible says once you pray in tongues and the other one should keep silent, wise, and turn. See, he's talking about a whole different thing. See, uh, uh, when, you, when we're praying in, praying in tongues, we're, we're talking to God and not to man. But the gift of tongues, I'm talking to man. 
I'm prophesying something to man. I'm talking to man. But when I'm praying in tongues, I'm not talking to man. I'm talking to God. Not man. It doesn't require me to give an interpretation. God understands what I'm saying. Amen. So I just had to politely ask him. So, you know, we're talking to God. Ain't none of your business. See yourself out and go somewhere else. You think you're coming here rebuking somebody. You don't even know what we're doing. We're all praying in the Holy Spirit, talking to God. Amen. Amen. So that's the difference between that gift of tongues and the prayer language of tongues. That's, that's, that'll come up a lot. So uh, speaking in tongues is a valid gift today. And it, accompany, and, and it accompanies receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So the tongues does accompany receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So some, some say tongues cease with the last apostle. See, over the years, we've always tried to come up with an excuse to get rid of it and not talk about it. And in this day and time, when the last time you heard somebody even teach a sermon on tongues? Or, besides me. <laughs> I'm going to try to talk about it every time, every time I get, get a chance. It's, it's a joke. I mean, amongst the body of Christ, it's like, what? You speak in tongues? What? It's just, just unheard of. And so they say, well, it's, it's, it ceased with the last apostle. When the last apostle died, tongues died. And they got this from misinterpreting the scripture, which I'll show it to you right now. If you go to 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, the misunderstanding stems from a wrong interpretation of 1 Corinthians 13 and look at verses 8 through 10. So, has tongue ceased? So, if you can prove to me that tongue ceased, because, I mean, they give, they, in some seminary schools, they give just amazing uh, presentations on why you don't have to speak in tongues. You don't have to do anything, right? Oh, why, why, don't, why don't people speak in tongues today? Well, that's not true. We speak in tongues today. Um, and they say, well, it, ends, it ceased with the last possible. Let me show you how they misinterpret this. Verse 8. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they, what, shall fail. Whether there be tongues, what, they shall cease. And whether there be knowledge, it shall, what, Vanish away. Verse 9. Let's read the whole thing and then I'll come back and milk it. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then Jesus. that which is in part shall be done away. The word. All right. Now, uh, let's go back to verse 8. Let's, let's milk this for a moment. Now, the whole key is really getting all of what he's saying. Charity never fails. Prophecy. Uh... There will be prophecy, there shall, there shall, prophecy will fail, tongues shall cease, and knowledge it shall vanish away. Well, in fact, this whole thing about knowledge in Daniel chapter 12 and 4. And the rest of that stuff Somebody cease. said, in the last days, knowledge is going to vanish away. No. In fact, the Bible says in Daniel chapter 12 and 4, knowledge will increase in the last days. It's not going to vanish away in the last days. But knowledge will vanish away, but not in the last days. Tongues will cease, not when the last apostle died. All right, so here's the key to this. Look at verse 9. He said, for we know in part, we prophesy in part. Okay, verse 10. But when that which is perfect is come, underline that. When that which is perfect is come. So when we see the Lord face to face, that is that which is perfect is come. When we see the Lord face to face in our glorified body, that which is perfect has come. Okay? When you see the Lord, that which is perfect has come. I mean, you've got your glorified body, you see Jesus, you don't need prophecy. You don't need tongues. And what was the other one? You don't need, you, you, already got, you already got all knowledge you need right now. All right? So when does that stop? When that which is perfect has come. Then that which is in part shall be done away. We don't, we're not, we don't have nothing in part. We're going to be, do you understand? Perfection. Glory to God. When that which is perfect has come, then all that other stuff will stop. 
So now here's the point I want you to get about tongues. Tongues is only beneficial to you while you are in your physical body. See, this is talking about the second return of the Lord, our gathering together unto him, that which is perfect, that's our glorified body. That which is perfect, Jesus and our glorified body. So praying in tongues helps only while we are in this physical body and have the limitation of a mind that is not completely renewed. So if you don't pray in tongues now, you won't need it when you, when you, when you die and, and when you go to heaven. It's only for now. It's a gift to benefit you while you're in your physical body. So think about this. Think about going to heaven and finally finding out what could your life have been like. But you did not use the gift. That's a gift. You got to decide whether you're going to use it or not. But that's the stuff I think about. I don't want to go to heaven and find out. Boy, a lot of stuff could have been avoided if you'd have just spent some time praying in tongues. God, dog it, I didn't know that. While you are in your body is the only time tongues is it any benefit to you. While you are alive in your physical body with your unrenewed mind and your, and your knowing in part self. See, because when I pray in the Holy Ghost, certain things I know in part, I get another part. I can be praying in the Holy Spirit and go in there with no enlightenment at all and come out with a full picture. That's the thing that really cautions me. You're going to be looking for tongues later on. And God was like, oh, you, you only needed that while you were in that body, in that world, in that physical world. And, and not every Christian understands how powerful that is. But supernatural, spirit-filled Christians, baptized in the Holy Ghost Christians, there's only so much you're going to do to them before they say, all right, you know, it's time to pull out the guns. There's so much worrying they're going to do before they say, I don't bullshit up. There's so much walking in a lack of peace before they get on their face and they come out. You, how many of you know when you pray in the Holy Ghost, for any period of time, you get up in peace? Why do you get up in peace? Because he's, he's already taken care of. And you don't even know what you said. You don't have any comprehension unless the Holy Spirit gives you uh, 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 interpretation of what you said, which he will do if you ask for it. It's so powerful. There are things I've just, there are things I didn't know how to get out of. There are things I didn't know how to make happen. There were things that happened I didn't know how to resolve. And my greatest weapon, Satan, Satan hates it, is when I go somewhere and I move from talking in English to speaking in tongues. The devil has no defense against a born-again, spirit-filled, tongue-talking believer who's received the gift. Ain't nothing he can do. I'm getting excited just talking about it right now, you know? Oh, glory be to God. I am convinced a lot of times revelation comes out of me. That's a result of the time that I spent praying in the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues, man. The Bible says you build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. The Bible also says when you speak in tongues, you speak wisdom. Hidden secrets not made plain to your understanding. Hallelujah. I just figured the only reason you ain't got it is you don't know about it. Well, you know today. Amen. Look at Romans 8, 26 and then 1 Corinthians 14, 2 and 4. Romans 8, 26 and 1 Corinthians 14, 2 and 4. Yeah, you're going to have people wondering, what are you doing? How did this happen? When did this take place? How come you're not sad? How come you're not this or that? Or how come you're that? You're going to say, uh, I received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen? All right, watch this. First Corinthians, what did I say? No, Romans 8, 26. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, now this is so amazing. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Now, let's, let's look at this. Likewise, the Holy Spirit helps our 
infirmities. What are infirmities? Weaknesses of the flesh. Things you can't do in your physical body. Like how are you going to pray in English about something you don't even know about? That would be rough, right? You don't even know what's going on. And so how do you pray about something you don't know what's going on? He says, likewise, the Spirit of God helps our infirmities. Colon, so he's getting ready to tell us how. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. There, there may be things going on with your children, things going on in your job. You don't even know how to pray for the thing because you don't know about it. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. So what's going to happen? But the Holy Spirit himself, not it. The Holy Spirit. See, so foreign, no relationship with the Holy Spirit. Just translate him as an it. Cousin it, Adam's family. Remember that? No, he's not an it. He says, but the Holy Spirit himself, what he'll do is make intercession for us. He'll begin to intercede on our behalf about the thing you don't know about and about the thing you don't know how to pray about with groanings which cannot be uttered in articulate speech. Now, I did a teaching, oh, maybe I think it was last year or a year and a half ago, I talked about the prayer of groanings. And I, because I, I, I just automatically assumed that they were talking about speaking in tongues, which, of course, there are a lot of times in praying in the Holy Spirit, you'll, you'll do some groanings as well. But I, I learned that there was a distinction in, in the groanings part uh, you know, Jesus was talking about weeping and groaning. He was actually praying. Uh, he stood before Lazarus, uh, began to weep and groan. And uh, what was that? Uh, I, I used to make fun of it as being an Easter speech. Jesus wept. <laughs> they were actually thinking he was crying. No, he was praying. That, that weeping was a prayer of groaning. Glory be to God. I don't know if you've ever gotten to that place. It's where I can't articulate anything. Uh, I used to get so full. I used to pray an enormous amount of time praying in tongues. And I would get so full that I could not articulate anymore. And I'd just start weeping and groaning. And it was probably the most powerful thing. Now I understand I don't have to pray three hours before I weep and groan. All I got to do is get in the Word and get in the presence of God. And, 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 and that will happen as well. So I pay attention to that. I pay attention to weeping and, and groanings. And I've never had that happen to me, and it didn't follow up with some type of, like, big breakthrough. Uh, and, and listen, when I start saying breakthrough, quit always thinking about a material breakthrough. Because your outside is just a result of what's going on inside. Remember, Taffy talked about get the inside world fixed, and you'll see God on the outside world. And so this is what he'll do. The Holy Spirit begins to intercede for you. He literally starts taking intercession and praying about the things you don't know about. And it works both in groanings and speaking in tongues. There was a lady, oh, years ago, she would, she, and my mom said she did it with me uh, several times. I mean, I was the kind of kid, I was curious about everything. I fell out the car on 75, you know, coming from Atlanta to, from a, uh, Thomasville, Georgia to Atlanta. I was back there playing with the little latch, just wondering what happened if I put that up, did that, and fell out the car, and she looked back, and I was gone, and the door was open, and came. She said, didn't have a scratch on it. I'm like, so that's what happened, you know? <laughs> We'd do all kinds of stuff, and she, she, she did a lot of praying. She still does to this day. My mama will tell you she don't miss a day spending time with God. She says, I'm telling you, and then she'll, she'll look at you and say, you need to do the same thing. She says, I, she says, I don't even feel right. If I don't spend time with him and he talks to me and he walks me through stuff and, 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 and listen, you know, somebody 81, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to what you're saying. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay attention to what's going on here. And this lady was praying in tongues and her child, I might have mentioned this last week, got off the bus and and wasn't looking where he was going and a car was speeding coming right by and he was getting ready to step out in front and, and he told his mama he fell back. It was like a wind pushed him back. And around the time that happened, she was praying in the Holy Ghost. Didn't know why, 
But she was praying in the Holy Ghost. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And the ability to be able to pray in the, in the Holy Spirit. Because there are things I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening. What's his. But I know when I pray in the Holy Ghost, it's like an insurance policy. He got me covered. Yeah. He will take care of me. And he will pray for things that I don't even know about. And then later on, maybe he'll let you know. You know, I was doing this time and this happened. I'm like, when was that? What day was that? What time was that? You know, I was praying in the Holy Ghost. Right. I knew I was supposed to be praying that time. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, if God wake y'all up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm all over the world. Please, I don't need no hour. Give me about 5 or 10 shundas, please. <laughs> Give me some shundas or something, man, because I'm going to need. Because God knows. We, and that's, what, that's, what, that's, that's what's so amazing and so supernatural. That when we look in the world and we see all of the tragic things that are going on, that's not us. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you, that means every tongue you hear on television, every tongue you heard, any tongue you heard saying something in your ear that ain't supposed to happen to you, every tongue that rises up against you, you condemn it. No, that ain't happening to me. No. Praise God and you release the word of the Lord. Amen. Are you tired of going through the motions and never seeing results in your life? It's time to embrace the positive change God wants for you. The seven...